Have you been considering starting an Etsy shop this year, but you're not sure where to start? I got you. Today, I'm gonna be covering everything you need to do before starting your Etsy shop. Pump the brakes. Before you do anything, make sure to read the Etsy seller's rules and regulations. Etsy has rules, just like all platforms. Make sure your product and shop ideas fit within these boundaries. If you want a video about these restrictions, let me know in the comments. The next step you should take is market research. If you're anything like me, you are constantly coming up with new ideas for your business. In the shower, at dinner, while you're trying to sleep, like all the time. But just because you think your idea is freaking genius doesn't mean there is a market for it. You can do market research by using the Etsy search bar to see if this is a frequently searched keyword. But even better, you can use a platform called Sales Samurai. If you wanna try it out, use my link in the description for 20% off. And if you want a tutorial on how to use Sales Samurai, let me know in the comments. Next up on my list is coming up with your shop's name, branding, and metadata. First, let's talk about the name. If you can, include a major keyword in the name of your shop. I feel like this is commonly overlooked, but it's a very important part about making sure your shop is found if somebody is searching for the main keyword that relates to your shop. For example, my very first ever Etsy shop, I was selling art printables. My shop name was K Printables. Did that make the biggest difference in the world, I'm not really sure, but I think it's very important to make sure keywords are stuffed everywhere. Branding is also super important and it ensures that you're attracting the right customers. Colors and fonts actually tap into the psychology of a person. So it's more than just making it look good, it's about who you're trying to attract and how you want them to feel. Once you finally decide on your branding, it's time to create it. And I recommend Canva. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already been dabbling with Canva, but if you would like a Canva tutorial on how to create all of your brand assets, let me know in the comments. Next is metadata or SEO. If you've already been doing your research, you've probably heard of SEO which stands for search engine optimization. This simply just means using specific words in your titles, descriptions, etc., to make sure you are found in search. I'm sure a lot of you already knew doing this in your listings is very important, but it's also important to do it in your actual shop as well. This includes the name of your shop, like we've already talked about, the about your shop section, announcements or updates, anywhere that you can add text or words, make sure those words are SEO friendly, which again, just means that they're targeted for search. This isn't just for potential customers, it's for Etsy too, so that they can find the proper customers for your shop. But how do you find the right keywords? Just like I mentioned before, you can use Sales Samurai to find keywords and phrases that people are commonly searching for. This is a great tool to use for both your shop and your listing. Again, check out the link in my description for 20% off. Another amazing website that you can use, and one of my favorites, is answerthepublic.com. This is honestly one of my favorite websites, not only for creating and generating content for my YouTube, Instagram, etc., but it's also a very unique tool to helping you find the right products that solve a person's problem. So how this works is taking a keyword, let's say art printables, and typing that keyword into their search bar. It's then going to generate legit questions the public is asking about your provided keyword. This helps provide us insight on what people are looking for, confused about, and it can be a great asset for our shop and products we offer. Another way that you can find really strong keywords is using any search search engine platform. So first starting with Etsy search bar and seeing what auto populates. So if you type in art printables, for example, what is coming up after that? Those are really strong keywords that you could be using in both your shop and listing. And it's also a really great way to come up with new product ideas as well. But don't just stop there. You can also go to Google, Amazon, really any platform that has a search bar and just see what people are searching for surrounding that keyword. Because at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter where you're finding these keywords. It's just letting you know that people are searching for it. Then 
next thing you should do before starting your Etsy shop is getting set up on social media. I know, I know, a lot of you have zero interest in social media, but honestly, it's such a great way to build up an audience and community surrounding your brand. But that doesn't mean you have to be on every single platform. First up is Pinterest. And yes, I do feel like Pinterest is one of the stronger contenders for Etsy sellers. It's an SEO rich platform and it's a great way to circulate your product. Next is YouTube. You had to know I was gonna recommend YouTube. And honestly, it's one of my favorite social media platforms obviously. If you feel comfortable and have the time, YouTube is one of the best ways to build an audience and community around your brand. There's really two different routes you can go with your YouTube channel. You could either have a lifestyle channel where you're more showing behind the scenes of your shop and your day-to-day -day life, or you can take the educational route and find something that you can educate your audience on that relates back to your product. So that way you can not only educate them and start building this online community, but then you can also lead them to your Etsy shop as well. Another great platform is Instagram. The reason I like Instagram so much is because it's a fun way to build a community and be able to get on a deeper level with your audience. I am a YouTube gal at heart and have very little interest in growing an audience on Instagram. Instagram, but I really like having Instagram because it's a great place to lead my customers and to lead my audience here on YouTube to Instagram so we can connect a little bit more personal through stories and direct message and things like that. Another great thing about Instagram is that you can save your stories as highlights. And so if you wanna do some behind the scenes content or a little bit more about you and your brand, you can save it in the highlights and that way it's available for anyone that stumbles upon your Instagram in the future. Next up, I have to mention it and that's TikTok. I know you either love it or you hate it. And to be frankly super honest, I kinda hate it. <laughs> I have a TikTok, I have put myself out there a little bit and played around with it. I even had this full-blown strategy that I think really could have worked if I wanted to put in the effort. So I'm definitely not saying don't do it. If you like TikTok, if you're a, a frequent user of TikTok, then I say go for it. Create the fun videos, post them, post them frequently, like all the time, every day if you can, and you will probably generate some traffic to your Etsy shop. I 100% think this is a great route for people. It's just really not for me. And I think it's because I have things like YouTube and Instagram that I've already started building. I also have a blog and a newsletter and I just don't have the energy and time right now to dedicate the time TikTok needs. Speaking of newsletters, I highly recommend email marketing. And I don't know if you'd really consider this social media, but I'm gonna lump it in here. I think having an email list is probably one of the most important things of having any kind of online business. And that is because you don't own Etsy, you don't own YouTube, you don't own Instagram or TikTok or Pinterest. So any community you build on those platforms can be taken away from you in a second. If you guys remember last year, all of Instagram and Facebook shut down and people freaked out. And that is because some people solely have their audience on those platforms. Can you just imagine if it shut down for good? You would be screwed. So instead, create some really awesome email marketing strategies and start building up your email list. I just recently really started leaning into email marketing and making it a focus of my business. And I've already went from zero to 500 email subscribers in just a few months so it's definitely possible and I actually have some really strong strategies if you have an Etsy shop so if you would like a video about how to build an email list using your Etsy shop please let me know in the comments Next up on the list is setting up your financial systems. I know what you might be thinking, I'm not making any money, why would I set up systems for money that doesn't exist? But isn't the goal to blow up your shop and start making tons of money? Yes, it is. Okay, then you need to go ahead and set yourself up for success now. So first things first, I recommend getting a business bank account. You should also create a bookkeeping system. Now I use QuickBooks because I have a lot of things going in and out of my business, but in the very beginning, if you're really not seeing much income, it's a little silly for you to be paying for a service like QuickBooks. So I've created a little bookkeeping page in Notion that you guys can download completely for free in the description of this video. But once you start growing and need a 
an all-in-one system, I highly recommend QuickBooks. Next up is talk to a tax professional about how much money you need to set aside for taxes. I set aside about 20% and that's based on my income and also where I live. You will wanna to talk to a tax professional or CPA in your area or that is familiar with the tax laws in your area so you can get the exact percentage of taxes you need to set aside. Maybe you don't have to set aside any money for taxes. What is the breaking point of when you need to start paying taxes? I don't know the answer to that question, which is why you need to talk to a tax professional. I would also even recommend speaking to other professionals as well, maybe a business coach or a lawyer. A lot of them offer free consultation, and though you might not actually be ready to purchase their services, you're starting a rapport with them, and maybe you'll use their services in the future. But they could probably answer some of the basic questions that is running through your brain right now, like do I need an LLC, a business license, etc. I know all of those questions were running through my head when I first started my online business, so I'd highly recommend just taking the time, setting up some meetings with these people and getting your questions answered. Now, if you need some ideas of actual digital products that you can start selling on your Etsy shop, check this video out right here and make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post videos like this all the time. Thank you so much for watching and keep your head in the clouds.